What's up, YouTube? Born in Nashville, Meadow here, and this is the lovely Luna, a good friend of mine, IRL. You'll know her on YouTube as Lunasaur, although she has never done anything on YouTube. Yeah, I don't have any videos. Yeah, she just comments on my videos occasionally, though. And we're here to just chat, you know, just to talk, so I can get you introduced to her, so she'll finally start making some damn videos of her own. Also known as we couldn't think of anything to make a video about. Yes, so. this is also true. So I figured we'd just talk. Which is kind of lame. You're not supposed to say that, Tool. <laughs> the second you the second they hear, oh, that's going to be kind of lame, and they're going to fucking go. Stay, please. It's going to get interesting. There's or gonna they be think like, it's funny because I'm a self-depreciating bitch. You're not a bitch. Shut up. There's going to be dancing and singing, and it's going to be a great time. You're a whore. <laughs> I have an idea. Hold on a sec. What? Put this on. No! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Why is that not put in a video yet? That thing's fucking scary. I intend to put it in that video I'm gonna make tomorrow with you. Okay. So. La la la. You're not supposed to do that on camera, whore. <laughs> You're the whore. We Your mother's a whore. This. Your mother's a whore. You're a whore. Your mother's a whore. You're 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 a whore. Beep beep. <laughs> Show us your nipple ring, Linda. I don't have one. Yet. Show them your ear. I'm not close enough for camera. What was I getting? No, I don't want. She has a really sexy ear. She's got like a double industrial, looks like an upside down cross. Okay. No, you can't see it. There we go. So what else do we talk about? Nothing. Talk about stupid shit. We were just actually talking about agnosticism and our opinions on it. She is of the opinion that it's bad to be agnostic. She thinks agnostics are the scum of the earth. That was your opinion. Shut up. <laughs> no, it wasn't my opinion. I don't mind agnostics. But a topic that's recently come up in a lot of my circles of discussion is agnosticism. And a lot of people, I'm finding, really don't like agnostic, agnosticism as a belief. Um, the difference, of, of course, with, between agnosticism and an, a theistic or an atheistic belief is that agnosticism deals with knowledge and theism and atheism deal with belief. Turn the fucking music off. I'm talking. I'm sorry. So let's talk. Go away. I don't want to talk about agnosticism. All right, so what are you talking about? Would you say you're more of an empiricist or a rationalist? What's the first one? Empiricism is the belief that knowledge is derived from perception. That's an imperialist then. No, rationalist. Oh, a rationalist. Rationalist is one who believes that lo knowledge is derived from logic and reason and thinking. Logic is derived from perception though. Is it? Yes. All right, so let's talk about that. You think logic is derived from perception? Yes. How so? How is it not? Well, I'll give you an example. Um, an example of a logical deduction is that 2 plus 2 is 4. Although we can perceive two objects and two objects making four objects, the number 2 is completely unbased on the physical world. It's got no, no course. In the words of David Hume, it's got no corresponding perception. Like the essence of the number two, two units, two units devoid of any kind of what two units? empirical, the number two. Just the two, the number two. The number two plus the number two equals the number four. Why? Because you perceive. Because it, it that makes logic. No, because it makes logical sense. And it if makes I logical never, sense because you perceive it that way. No, how do I perceive it that way? There's no, Obviously. there's no perception of the number Think two. Think about it next time you're high, and you'll understand. There's no perception of the number two. Okay? There is. No, there isn't. Show me the number two. <laughs> you can't. That's what I'm saying. That's two fingers. It's not the number two. It's, it's this two many, objects. Though. You know what two this is. This many. 
this many. No, I know how many two is. But okay, I'll give you a different example. Um, if I were to take the value of x as 1, and y is x plus 2, and z is 2x, okay? And the, and the value of x flat. is 1. The world is flat. What is that relevant to math? It's common knowledge. It's logical. No, it isn't. It used How to is be. It? No. Yes. Is, no, you know what? That's proof that empirical fact isn't always true. Because people looked around and noticed that everything they stood on was flat, therefore the world was flat, empirically. However, rationally, because the horizon wasn't so... Rationally, there, because... Rationally, because the, the world couldn't sit on anything... Sorry. Rationally, because if the world was flat, it had to be sitting on something, and no. that thing had to have dimension, like a giant turtle or something like that, it right? It would just be a flat thing in space. Yeah, but in space... And they didn't think of space yet. True. You can't use those things to rationalize it. Using what they knew, rationalize the world being round. I suppose. So you're saying it's by inference of logic. Yeah. So what if 2 plus 2 is 5, and 2,000 years from now, they're going to discover that 2 plus 2 can actually be 4. No, math, math is absolute truth. So was the world being flat? No, that's not absolute truth. That's conditional upon perception. Math is true no matter how you perceive things. If like if I said, okay, here's two apples, and then I said, here's another two apples, and then I like spun them really quickly, and I happen to have five apples, right? You're not going to think two plus two is five, because two and two make four. I clearly, clearly added another apple. So empirically, it wouldn't make sense. But rationally, two plus two is four. It's a mathematical truth, and it's absolute, regardless of perception. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, no? I just proved it to You're you. You're perceiving math. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Math is entirely and purely thought. That's perception. No, it isn't. Thought is in your head. Perception is how you see the real world. You perceive your own thoughts. How do you perceive your own thoughts? That's what you do. Do you, like, turn your eyes around backwards and go, Jesus Christ, look at those thoughts. No, you don't perceive your thoughts. You have thoughts. You don't perceive them. Perceive them has to be through one of the five senses. Which sense are you perceiving thought through? Perception isn't through senses only. Perception is the act of receiving sensor, sensory information through your senses. Well, then I don't like this argument anymore. Why not? Because I thought it was more a general term. What did you think perception meant? Like, perception, in general. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for not using the word perception in the definition of perception, which, by the way, the definition of perception is perception, in the general sense, at least. Thank you, Captain Defining Things. Now I know how to define things. <laughs> you made the definition. How would you define the word perception without using the word perception? I'm not a fucking dictionary. So why were you speaking as a dictionary? <laughs> Clearly not. <laughs>